And let's get you right out the door as we get a check of the forecast with Thomas Patrick. Good morning, Thomas. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Channing. Your morning commute is going to be, well, just okay for today. Still plenty of mild conditions out there as our temperatures start from the 40s and we finish. We actually could even get in the 50s by 9 o'clock for today. So just look for partly to mostly cloudy conditions across uh but a better part of the inland northwest, but down to the south towards the Lewiston area, we are tracking a bit of some light showers, and that actually will set the stage for a bit more shower and perhaps even thunderstorm activity in the southern portions of the inland northwest later on today. Well, now to our big story of the morning. The eastbound I-90 Thor and Freya exit is officially closed as of this morning. Crem 2's Nicole Hernandez is live near that exit ramp right now. So, Nicole, can you tell us it's about 630 this morning. How is traffic moving along right now? Channing still a little early for there to be too much traffic, but the the actual off ramp there is officially closed down. So we'll give you a look right now just to kind of see what things are looking like. You can see cars on the freeway on I-90 passing by. No one coming through that off ramp anymore and obviously cars here on third as well. Now we're expecting this part of third to get a little bit more congested as the morning goes on. The morning commute continues just because people will be coming off of Altamont instead potentially and coming coming down this road as opposed to getting off at this off ramp. So we'll make sure to keep you updated as that morning commute continues. But for now, this closer is just for the eastbound exit here at Thor and Freya. So both of the Thor and Freya on ramps will still be open. Eventually, the westbound exit will close, but not quite yet. Now, the city says the whole project will last eight months. But for now, the eastbound Thor Freya exit ramp will be closed until mid June. The city says they broke the project up into phases to help with business access, but drivers should still expect extra traffic. That's because on top of construction on the off ramp, the city is also upgrading Thor and Freya between Hartson and Sprague. So what we're doing is actually replacing that asphalt with concrete, um, which will make that uh, that corridor much stronger and more durable over time. So this eight, eight month project here is just a smaller portion of the six year city plan that is a full comprehensive street plan. In Spokane, Nicole Hernandez, Crem2 News. All right, thank you, Nicole. Another construction project that is set to begin tomorrow is uh, the, uh, Channing will tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, that's right. Crem2's Malia Kamal is live at Hatch Road this morning. So Malia, what should drivers expect for their morning commute starting tomorrow? Channing, I'm off of Hatch Road and I can tell you right now it's pretty busy, but starting tomorrow, this stretch of road will not be open to drivers. Now, Highway 195 um, that connects to Hatch Road will be closed. So the Hatch Road Bridge will close at this particular spot. Now, the northbound lane may also be closed from time to time for equipment access. Now, Hatch Road will be open for um, Hangman, Hangman Valley residents who like live in the area. Businesses off of Highway 195 are also considering how the Hatch Road closure could impact traffic. Now the Late, uh, Late Creek just opened Saturday for the season. Now the course closed early last year for renovations. Now the road construction has the course preparing for another change. Now the director of the of the golf course says that he expects to lose some regulars, but hope that they will be able to recruit more clientele. We're anticipating we might get some people from the South Hill that would normally go across the bridge and play the Creek Equulsion. They'll come down here to Lata Creek. So that's what we're hoping for. Now, the director says that staff is reminding golfers about this when they reserve their tee times. Now, this construction will take place for several months, and they're expecting it to um, wrap up around the end of July. Live in Spokane, Malia Kamal, Crem 2 News. Weather-wise, we are expecting yet another warm day today. It was well in the 60s from this past weekend. We are on track to even already as of this morning, getting closer to sunrise, still standing at 45 degrees in Spokane. Now we take a look at our forecasted high temperatures for today. Mid 60s for the most part across the inland northwest, perhaps a little bit cooler down on the Palouse where there will be some more cloud cover and the potential for some shower or even thunderstorm activity. As you take a quick look at our future tracker, you can see 
see that there is a storm system that is going to move from the south to the north across the uh, areas of Oregon or central Idaho could get uh, much farther north than what that image just showed us. So as for our bus stop forecast, I am going to keep a chance for showers or thunderstorms in the forecast as the kids are heading home. But I think the large majority of us, especially from Spokane and northward, probably do end up staying dry for today. It's time now for your morning rush. More news in less time. A man was sentenced to 31 years in prison on Friday for killing his ex-wife two years ago. Nathan Beal was found guilty a year and a half ago. The Spokane County prosecutor also confirmed they are filing a separate murder charge against Beal for killing a man who was experiencing homelessness. The Coeur d'Alene Downtown Association is offering a reward leading to the arrest of the people responsible for vandalizing a statue. On Friday morning, the well-known suffragette statue on 6th and Sherman was spray painted. If you have any information that could help police identify a suspect, call the number there on your screen. Well, yesterday was the second day of the Pacific Northwest Qualifier Volleyball Tournament, and teams from all over the country are here in Spokane hoping to make their spot in the national tournament. The tournament is typically our region's biggest tourist drop. Get this, it's even bigger than Bloomsday and Hoop Fest. The tournament continues next Friday, and that's a look at your morning rush. Two UW medicine doctors are among a team of psychiatrists in Poland putting together a mental health care system for Ukrainian refugees. The group arrived on Saturday. One UW professor says the goal is to provide mental health response skills for children as young as 15 years old, so then they are able to help those around them. Most of them would you would you know propose have been have experienced direct effects of this just by being displaced. You know, even if they did not witness someone being injured or harmed or have to take shelter themselves, which would be very direct uh, traumatic experiences, they are going to be, you know, the majority of these folks are going to be um, worried about their families and their homes, their pets. So they say the health effects and mental health effects are long lasting, making it so important to help refugees early on. Well, a Seattle-based drone company is now helping Ukrainian emergency responders with their search and rescue efforts after Russian bombing attacks. Brink just donated 10 drones worth $150,000 to the Ukrainian emergency services. The company's founder, Blaine Resnick, wanted to help his home country. Resnick and his team just conducted an extensive training session with 12 Ukrainian first responders in Poland. He hopes this one-of-a-kind technology will make a big difference. It's one of the only drones in the world that can operate in zero light and GPS denied conditions. We build the only drone in the world with two-way audio. These two things are microphones uh, and this is a speaker driver. Well, the drones can also punch through glass, which you saw there, which is critical during search and rescue operations. Resnick says his company will donate more drones in the near future. There are a lot of photos and videos online claiming to show current footage of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The Verify team is here to help you sort through what's accurate and what isn't. Take a look at this viral image from Facebook of a helicopter airlifting a red tractor. The post reads, quote, NATO resupplying Ukrainian farmers anti-tank supplies, unquote. The post is a reference to photos and videos emerging from Ukraine of farmers towing abandoned Russian tanks with their tractors. But is that what's happening in this image? Let's verify. These are our sources. Verified traced the viral image back to a tweet from November 2020 posted by Mahindra Tractors, a company based in India that sells farm equipment. In October 2020, a news agency in India posted two photos on Twitter of the same airlifted tractor seen in the viral Facebook post. In the tweet, they said the tractor was being transported between two cities in India. The photo visible in the Mahindra Tractors tweet clearly shows the words Indian Air Force on the helicopter, as well as a bullseye symbol of orange, white, and green, a symbol of the Indian Air Force. So we can verify, no. The viral image does not show a NATO helicopter delivering a tractor to Ukrainian farmers. The photo is from India in 2020. With your fast fact, I'm Ariane Daytil. This morning, we are learning more about the death of Foo Fighters drummer Taylor Hawkins. And it's plenty mild out there for this morning, and that'll end up with another day in the 60s, but we are tracking a chance for some showers and even thunderstorms by this afternoon.
Well, time for your wake up call now with the Oscars on our minds. We want to know what is your favorite movie of all time, whether it was ever nominated or not. Here's what some of you have already written in. Someone wrote Gone with the Wind. It's a wonderful life. No particular order. I think this one came from our director, Dylan. The Shining, Super Bad. Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Okay, let us know. <laughs> Couldn't pick one. Let us know what your favorite is. Text us 509 448 2000.